once upon a time. What is it about that phrase? You hear that, and I pause just for a moment, and your brain went somewhere. But it probably went to a pretty happy place. When we talk about corporate storytelling, sometimes we get a little pushback, and we say, what is that? This is all about business. We don't have time to tell stories here. If you're in sales, and if you know what a white paper is, what do you think that is? It's a story. About, it's a success story of how you've helped another customer at one time, and now you're going to share that with him. But we want to be able to bring these stories to life. We need to think about where can we find these stories? Where do I start? I know that telling a story might be good, but I'm not real good at telling stories. Well, how can you get better? We're going to give you some of that in this section. So let me start you with this. The place where we always start when it comes to telling a story is we want to know what's the point. What's the point that you want to make, not the point of the story? We'll go there in a moment. What is the point that you would like to make in your presentation? And then based on making that point, you then have a decision to make. How do I want to make that point? Do I want, do I want to use a metaphor or analogy? Do I want to share a story? Maybe I could just throw a pie chart up there, show them a bunch of statistics. All those are fine. Telling a story is one more method of making a point. So you have to think about what is the point that you want to make in the presentation as you construct that body of the presentation. We're all about options. Corporate storytelling is another option of what you can do. So first decide what is the point. When a story begins, if the audience does not appreciate the fact that they don't know where you're going with it, that could turn them off. And so you have to consider your audience in this as well. One recommendation that we give when we talk about Kaba, the opening of how you can open a presentation, one of the methods to grab attention is to tell a story. And in our workshops, we will mention sometimes that executives in a conference room don't necessarily care for you to get up there and tell a story about you and your wife going to Chewy's. Because the executives are going to say, what is he doing? Does he know my time is money? And he's, he's spending three minutes talking about him and his wife at Chewy's. And then even if the story gets tied back into the point that's being made, that audience may not appreciate it. So we want you to use common sense. Stories don't apply in every situation. OK, got it, Russ. Executives don't like stories. I didn't say that. For that purpose and for that audience, it may not go over well. Let me take that same group of executives, the same group that we were talking about, and let's send them out into the hill country of central Texas and it's cool outside, and they've just released some fresh trout into the streams because it gets too hot for them to live down here, but they just released some out into the stream, and we're taking this group on a leadership weekend retreat. And they get there on Friday night, and on Friday night, you're finishing up your dinner, you're having your cheesecake, and then I stand up to give you a little preview of this is what we're going to be covering over the weekend. And I tell you a story about how I love to fly fish. And I say my dad was a fly fisherman. He was a guide. And I got to go with him on so many trips. I learned so much about fly fishing. And I also learned that fly fishing is a lot like leadership. And I give you three reasons why fishing, fly fishing, is very similar to leadership. Now tell me, does that executive leadership audience appreciate the story or they don't like stories? They probably appreciate it there. Do you see how what I changed was the presentation itself, the purpose of why they are there, and I changed the atmosphere a little bit. So when we say corporate storytelling, understand what is the point, but I also want you to think about would it be appropriate to share that? From a story length, stories generally only last about one to two minutes. That's all we want. The only time you see an extended story is when you see someone who has lived through an amazing event and their entire 45-minute presentation is the journey. And they walk you through it and you love it, don't you? If they're effective at delivering it, you love, and that's one story that they told. We're not getting into those types of stories. That's an entire presentation story. We're just talking about sharing a story to make a point. One of the pushbacks we get is people will say, I don't have stories. Speakers, they seem to have stories. I don't know where all these stories. Do they make those stories up? No, but they're very, very observant. So here's what I can recommend to you. If you want to have stories to tell, you have to start observing your own life and documenting them. The most effective stories that you will be able to share with others when you present are your own stories. Kevin and I both keep a journal. We have a paper format one, and we have a digital one on our computer. And when we experience something, it usually triggers something in our mind. It says, you could use that in a workshop sometime. And so we go and we document it. We're not quite sure how it'll get used or what it will get used for and how we're going to tie it in, but I don't want to forget that this happened to me. 
And so we journal and document those things that have happened. You can find things in newspaper articles, stories, amazing stories that you can share. You can find things on the web, just be sure to check your sources. There are many places where you can find stories and share them. One story that I share in a workshop when we're closing is a story about how we as mankind made it to Mount Everest and how long it took us, 32 years, from 1921 to 1953. Started in 21, didn't reach it till 1953. But I have a story that I go through about those first three expeditions, and I share that. Is that my story? Was I there? No. But it is a story, and I tie it into being totally committed. And so when they leave the workshop, I want them to be totally committed to what I gave them. So think about where you can get those stories, and I would highly recommend that you start documenting your own, whether it's paper or whether it's digital. Next, you have to ask, how do I select a story? I have several to choose from here. How do I select one? There's three things that we ask you to look at. First one, how much time do you have? And we say how much time for the presentation. We said all stories should be about one minute, maybe two minutes. So if you only have five minutes to speak, well, you need to make the decision. Do you want to spend two-fifths of your time telling a story? If it's just to make one small point, you might decide, you know what? I don't think I have time to share a story today. So when we say how much time do you have, think of the entire presentation and will a two-minute, one-minute, two-minute story fit in that position. Next, what's the purpose? And when we say purpose, this is the purpose of your presentation. And we shared that with you earlier. What do you need them to know, feel, and do? Corporate stories are great at addressing which one of those three? Feel. They're fantastic at generating the feeling. So as you're doing the purpose, you do a no feel do and you document, I need them to feel passionate about this project that we're taking on. Well, think about how could you generate that feeling? It might be a corporate story, and if we deliver it properly, we can help generate that feeling. The third piece is who's the audience that you're speaking to? I gave you the example of the executives. Let me give you a completely opposite example. You're speaking to children in elementary school. Children in elementary school. So I got the whole group gathered around. Come, up, come here, boys and girls. It's story time. And they all sit down, and I say, once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived a beautiful princess. Who in my audience is relating to me and connecting right now? All my little princesses, right? Who did I just lose? All the little boys. Yeah, this is nothing I want to listen to. Now, let me change one thing in the story. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived a mighty warrior. Who did I just lose? All my princesses. Who did I just get their attention? It's all my little boys. Now, I'm using it as an extreme example, but when we say consider the audience, we want you to think about who are you speaking to, and will they, first of all, enjoy a story, and second of all, what type of story should I be sharing with them? That can help you make your selection. Never just pick stories that you like to tell. I want you to pick the stories that the audience will appreciate. So how do I structure a story? Well, Hollywood seems to have figured this out. Hollywood didn't figure it out. They learned from others. They learned from people like Homer, Greek tragedies, William Shakespeare. There's some great literature out there of some amazing stories. And when you think about what is involved in a great story, well, all great stories have characters. And those characters experience some kind of an action. And most likely, bless you, most likely... It is a struggle that they are going through. So there's action, there's struggle, the character's going through it, and then finally, finally, what's the last piece? Think of any Greek tragedy or maybe just any type of storyline from Hollywood. Eventually at the end, it all works out, resolution. So you have resolution. So the four pieces, the characters, the action that they go through, something needs to get done, the struggle that they have, and then the resolution. You might think, Russ, I'm not going to talk about Indiana Jones in my business presentation. Well, I'm not suggesting that you do. But could you talk about someone on your team who experienced an issue when we tried to stand up the database cluster and we had never seen this before? So I asked him to get in touch with Dell. And I wanted them to talk to some people over there because they probably have the know-how over there to help us get this stood up properly. And so you tell the story, and really what it is is you have a character who's going through some action, they have a struggle, and then in the end there's a resolution. If you're in sales, these work very well. Give them a story and tell about how you've helped another customer 
achieved some sort of result. They went through a struggle and they achieved this. Always keep this in mind that if you share anything about other customers, you never give names. You don't name them at all. Unless they've given you marketing rights to create a white paper, then you're probably okay. But we never, we never tell about someone else's struggles. That would be entirely inappropriate. So we know that those are the four pieces. Next, how do I deliver that story? If you've ever been asked by someone to read me a story or tell me a story, sitting around the campfire and someone looks at you and says, tell us a story, a ghost story, tell us a story. Or someone says, read a story to me. There are things that small children can teach us. First, they want every character in the story to have a name. They do. And if you think back to reading or telling stories to kids, if you started telling a story and you said, to them, well, there was this little boy and he was walking up the dark pathway to an old castle. One of the kids is going to say, what was his name? We can learn from that because we as humans relate to other people that have names. So what should you do? I recommend you name your characters. Again, keeping in mind about the business that I just talked about, okay, that we wouldn't do that. But when characters are named and when they have a name, we can relate to them. I went to a presentation and a gentleman brought up a picture and similar to this, brought up a picture and said, that's a, a grandpa and his grandchildren. Let's, let's name them. Who, what's a grandpa's name? And somebody yelled out, Sam. Okay, that's Sam the grandpa. And so Sam's picture showed up several times throughout the story, and it really connected with the audience more because instead of being a static picture, that's Sam now. So we get that. Second thing I would recommend is give your characters a voice. I have my daughter sitting next to me, and I'm reading a story to her. And as soon as I open up the book and start reading, she'll look up at me and she'll say, do the voices, Dad. Do the voices. Because everyone that she hears, she wants them to have an appropriate voice. We in business don't necessarily need to hear a SpongeBob voice in order to relate to it. What we want to hear, though, is dialogue. I'll give you an example. Well, I went to my manager and asked if I could work on this project, so he said that would be OK. That's fairly stale. If we add dialogue to it, say, I set up a meeting with my manager about this project. He said, Russ, if we're going to get this done in time, I need you to lead this project. Do you hear the difference between the two? One was like a reporter talking about what happened yesterday. It's the news. I'm reciting what's on the news. Whereas if I add dialogue, it actually took you into the moment as if you were watching it take place right in front of you, not asking you to put on a dramatic show for your customers or whoever you're presenting to, but just by saying something simple where you put it in quotes and you speak it as dialogue, it can be very connecting to your audience. So these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind. One other thing I will point out, and that is, two stories that everyone in business should be able to tell. It's the who am I story and the who are we story. If you're in sales, it's the elevator pitch for you and it's the elevator pitch for your company. And if you haven't got those down yet, that would be my recommendation on the first stories that you should sit down and write after today. The who am I story, what do you do? Who am I, what do I do? And then who do you work for? Talk about the company and what they do. All of that is not only gonna start with a once upon a time, but how do we always like them to end? and they lived happily ever after. Thank you.